Hallelujah, hallelujah. Any joy in the house? Amen, amen. You can be seated, amen. Ooh, I love that song. That song will break the sadness off you. Whew. Amen. Well, let's get out our Bibles and go to the book of Ephesians, chapter number three. Hey, man, we got three things going on. We got church, Catalyst Youth Group, and the gatekeepers. <laughs> three fronts, amen. Let's take a look at verse number 16. I'm going to read uh, to 17. It says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love. I want to minister uh, tonight on the title, Going Deep. Going Deep. Amen. Father, I just thank you uh, so much, Lord, for another opportunity to minister your word. And Father, I ask that you will uh, just give me your words, your words of wisdom, your words of knowledge, your words of understanding. Father, I ask that you would give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would want me to speak. And Father, I ask that your people hear your voice and my voice and that you will use the word tonight to speak into lives, into situations, into circumstances. Father, I ask that it not just be information, but let it be an impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God. So not only be hearers of the word, we can become doers of the word. So Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, if you believe it, say amen. You know, many times we are only concerned about two directions for our lives, and that is either going forward or going up. Few people are concerned about going deep. When I talk about going deep, I'm talking about your spiritual root system. I'm talking about spiritual foundations that will sustain your life. We are living in a time where some Christians are so shallow in their walk with the Lord. Instead of sticking with the Lord, whatever comes into their life is able to blow them away. God did not save you to lose you. Uh, God did not save you uh, for you to get beat up by the devil. God did not save you to uh, live on a roller coaster. God saved you to be victorious. But it's important that we don't just focus so much on going forward or going up in our lives, that we have an understanding that God has a, spirit, a system and a process to develop our spiritual root system. Can I tell you that this is something that you'll never arrive at? Because the Bible says we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Amen. So every level that you ask God that I want to go up to the next level, you can be rest assured that before you go up, God is going to begin to develop your root system. Amen. Maybe you are a six-story building. Amen. And you're saying, God, I want to be a 20-story building. Well, uh, the foundation on a six-story building cannot sustain the foundation on a 20-story building. So before you go up, God begins to develop and expand your existing foundation. And then, listen, if you can make it through that process, eventually what you've been asking God for will, will show up in your life. Listen, as Christians, we got to have longevity. You can't be in this thing for the shortcut. This is not the flash, the splash in the pan, amen? And we got to be careful that we're not raising up a generation that is not able, to, that, that don't have the stamina to finish their course with the Lord or to arrive and see the completion of faith projects. Amen. Currently, listen, I minister this a lot. Your faith is on assignment right now. There's something that, that you don't yet, yet possess in your life, but it's connected to your hope because you're hoping for some because y'all didn't just come to church. You're not just serving God for nothing. Amen. Everybody is believing and hoping for something, and that is the place that your faith is working in. But how many people know that faith needs time to construct and to put together what you're believing God for? For. But if you blow up and blow the whole process, you'll always be somebody that's hoping, but you never see the manifestation of what God has for your life. Amen. But somebody say, it's time to go deep so I can go up and forward in my life. 
Pull up Ephesians 4.14. The Bible says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lay, lay, lie wait to deceive. I told you God been ministering to me about that doctrine thing. And listen, it said that people are tossed to and fro by all these different doctrines. It's important that we stick with what has been proven in our lives. For something to be proven is something you have to spend time with. It's something you have incorporated into your daily life, and you stick with it long enough to begin to see the results show up in your life. Amen? That's the problem. When you get too much revelation coming in your life, you never have enough time to see the first revelation that God gave you to come to pass. And we're so quick to jump from this to that. Listen, there's things that God told me last year that I'm still walking out this year. And listen, if I let so much revelation come into my life, it'll bury an instruction that God gave me last year. And I'm wondering why I'm not hearing from God because you didn't do the last thing he told you to do amen and God is saying why would I keep giving you more revelation more building projects and now your life is nothing but a representation of inconsistency and you have these projects but you don't have no manifestation of my goodness in your life because you always jump to the new thing and you never uh, exhaust the last thing that I told you to do somebody say revelation Listen, God gives you revelation to incorporate right into your life, not to try out. Listen, a lot of us, uh, we come to God and we don't see nothing in 30 days or a few months and we want to throw in the towel. How long did you give the devil time to wreck your life? And now you get mad at God because he don't put it back together in 30 days or six months. But you gave the devil 20 years to destroy your life. And now we get impatient with God. We want to rush the process. We get disgruntled. We look at people that have been walking with God for 20 years. And we want what they want in five years. And you try to blow the process. And God's not going to do that. Well, I tried it out for 30 days. I did it for 18 months. Can I tell you something? It might take longer than 18 months. 18 months ain't the magic number, amen? It might take longer than 18 months, amen? It depends how you cooperate. Six years ago, came here for help, and now she's put in position to help others, amen? What was it? She cooperated. She didn't fight against the process. She wasn't a know-it-all, amen? I'm going to submit to people that know way more than me and let them impart to me so I can listen now. Instead of being somebody that's a receiver, now I can become a giver. can't say everything. Listen, once you have experienced, you have an experience with truth, it's hard for someone to change you or rearrange you. Let me say it again. Once you have an experience with truth, it's hard for someone to change you or rearrange you. When you have this, you are, un, you are able to reject Saul's armor. See, everybody's looking for a new thing because you don't have nothing proven in your life. What does David look like as the young shepherd boy going into the palace and the king trying to put something on him that he never used? But David was so confident in the revelation and the truth that God had him in. He said, listen, ain't no way I'm about to fight the greatest battle of my life. This ain't the time to experiment. This is the time for me to use what's been proven in my life. Amen. But when you have something that's been proven in your life, listen, you're not so quick to let Saul put his armor on you. Amen. Look at your name and say, I don't need Saul's armor. I got my own weapon. See, that's why nobody can't tell me nothing about discipleship. 
Because discipleship is the real deal. It's not playtime. It's beyond church. It's these, when you become a disciple of Jesus Christ, all, all, the, all the people Jesus encountered in the Bible, he only had 12 disciples. All these people he produced miracles on, he delivered, he set free, and he only had 12 solid disciples. Who are the disciples? The disciples are the ones that are willing to lay their lives down for Jesus Christ. They are all in. Amen. They're not there for the just the benefits. Amen. They're there because they love Jesus and they recognize without him they are nothing. They are not willing to abandon their relationship with Jesus Christ for nobody. It's not a church thing. It's a life thing. It's like air amen it's like food it's like water amen he becomes so so engrafted it's such a, a necessity of your life amen you you don't you don't compromise your relationship for nobody amen but a disciple is the real deal amen we got deliverances movement going on in the body of Christ we got our prophetic movements going on we need a discipleship movement After you done delivered them and prophesied them, send them over here uh, to go deep now, amen, to go get rooted and grounded and get out of the fluff and get a real relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's important that you always realize and understand what the Lord is doing in your life. If I ask you right now, what is God doing in your life? Could you answer that? Pull up Colossians 1.9. If you know what God's doing, you shouldn't walk around here looking crazy or confused. You should know exactly why I'm going through what I'm going through. I know exactly when I was in the faith on what God was working on. He was working on me. He was working on my inconsistency. He was working on my up and down. He was working on my attitude. He was working on, on my emotionalism. He was working on me. I knew exactly what God was doing. Colossians 1.9 says this. Here's a prayer to pray over your life. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not stopped praying for you, asking specifically that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, with insight into his purpose and understanding of spiritual things. God's complete package for your life will be manifested in his will, not outside of his will. Listen, if God called you, uh, there was a move of God that brought you into the will of God, you ain't supposed to leave that. You don't leave that because somebody stepped on your toe. You don't leave that because you got offended. You don't leave that. The only one that can release you from that is God himself. Now, if you want to play around with angels and demons, amen, then be my guest. Amen. But when you uh, leave the will of God, now you have limited God, and now God is not able to do his full package that he has for, you, for your life. Amen. You can't be a maverick. Amen. You can't be loose with your relationship with God. You got to be tight with this thing. You got to be disciplined with this thing. You got you to gotta take an oath. Amen. Like you signed up for the military. Amen. You can't just go AWOL. Amen. You can't just jump ship. Amen. You can't just throw in the towel. There should be some, some, some depth, amen, to your spiritual walk, amen. There, there shouldn't be storms that so easily blow you away, amen, that knock you down, that get you in your emotions, amen. Your, your relationship with God should be much deeper than that. How deep is your faith? I got to stay in the will of God. I can't let her move me out. I can't let him move me out. I can't let my emotions move me out. I can't let the devil move me out. I got to stay in the will of God because I got to receive everything that God has for my life. This must not be working for my bad. It must be working for my good. Amen. Even though all hell is breaking out all around me, he must be doing something in my root system. He must be developing a foundation. My mind is like, you're crazy for sticking with this. Amen. But something on 
on the inside is telling me that all things are working together for the good. Amen. That something is happening spiritually down on the inside of my spirit. Amen. And I, 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 I can't lose sight of that. I got to stay in his will. I got to fight for this thing. I got devils trying to attack me in my sleep. Devils trying to attack me during the day. Devils trying to attack my health. Devils trying to attack my emotions. Devils throwing imaginations at me, making me think that this person's against me and she's against me. And I'm hearing these, these slanderings of the enemy, amen, and he's trying to jack up where I'm. He's trying to make the will of God as something that's jacked up. He's trying to make me uncomfortable. He's trying to make, not make me feel at home because he wants me to change addresses. He wants me to change locations because he wants to come back and wreck my life once again. But I cannot give him that opportunity. I got to fight the good fight of faith, amen. I got to take a licking and keep on ticking, amen. I got to get this thing. I got to get mine. I come too far to jump ship. I got to get this. I got to let God root me and ground me in this thing. I got to be a strong Christian. I can't be a weak Christian. He's called me the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the commander of the armies of heaven, has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light to be a soldier in his army. Amen. I got to take it seriously. I got to take it lightly. I got to take it more serious than the United States government. Amen. The Lord, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am has called me. Amen. I need to respect what he's done and doing in my life. Pull up Colossians 2, 6 through 7. The Bible says, and now just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust him too for each day's problems. Live in vital union with him. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him. See that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth that you were taught. Let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he has done. See, sometimes we miss our connection with the Lord, that we have a vital union with him, and that, that, that with that union that we have as we go deeper in God, we are, listen, when, when, the, when the devil attacks you, press into God. That ain't the time to run away from God. That's the sign to say, you know what, I'm going to get up a little earlier. You know what, I was going to prayer three times a week. You know, let me kick it up a notch and let me go five times a week. Amen. The devil, the level of strength that I had for this, for, for, uh, this battle is not enough, so I need to kick it up in my union with God. And as I kick it up, I'm tapping in to vital nourishment, vital strength, vital power. Amen. My flesh, the flesh, the flesh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. I got to bypass my flesh. I got to do stuff that my flesh don't want to do. And in the process, my spirit is digging deep, and we're going to tap into the river of Almighty God, the will of God, and then it's going to spring up and give me the strength and the power that I need to overcome this current adversity. Amen. I got to tap in. I got to go deep in this thing. I got to go deep. Amen. Some of y'all need to start praying in tongues, amen. The Bible says that he that's speaking in an unknown tongue, edifying himself, builds himself up into an edifice, amen. Something beyond, amen. Sometimes, this, God told me this the other day. He said you got to become a giant to beat the giant. And speaking in tongues is one of the greatest ways to edify your inner man so your inner man can become a spiritual giant. I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to pray for five minutes. I'm going to pray for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, amen, whatever it takes, amen, to get my spirit out of this, out of this captivity, to get my spirit free from this adversity. I'm about to break free out of this thing.
I got to go deep. I got to press in. I'm up under attack. I don't feel the Lord's presence. But I'm going to stick with it. Amen. I'm going to keep showing up until I get my breakthrough. Amen. I'm going to be like the Terminator. <laughs> Y'all remember the Terminator? Yo, they shot that dude. Do, 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 do. That dude was like. We got to become spiritual terminators for the Lord. That no matter what the devil hits us with, uh, surely now he's going to give in the towel. Surely now she's going to give up. And then you get back up with that praise. Hallelujah. I know they ain't going to come up in there Wednesday night praising me. After all the hell I put them there to, through today, amen. And you come in here and praise God anyway. You blow that devil's mind. Man, that dude is the terminator. He's a spiritual terminator, amen? Arnold on him, baby. Now listen, you must understand that your depth in God is connected to how far you go in God. Pull up Psalms 92. 13 through 15. The Bible says those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Notice the planting came before the flourishing. The planting is what sustained what begins to flourish. If you have a plant that begins to flourish, but its roots are not deep, the very growth of what's on top will expose the weak connection of the roots. So sometimes we want to go up, but God says, your roots are not deep enough. Let's work on the roots, and then we can begin to work. And look what he said. Those that are planted in where? The house of God. Listen, ain't no, I don't care what's going on in your life right now, don't get disconnected from the church. Because as long as you stay connected to the church, they, the devil may try to stunt your growth. He may try to delay your blessing and this and that. But he can't hold on and block it for long. It's only a matter of time because of your connection to the house of God that flourishing and production and growth must come into your life. I'm planted, amen. I'm not planted in a crack house. I'm not planted in a bar. I'm not planted at a strip bar. I'm planted in the house of God. When I was planted in those wrong areas, the devil was able to steal and rob and kill out of my life. But now it's a new day. It's a new season, amen. It's a new Lord. It's a new command. It's a new sheriff in town. And my feet are now planted in the house of God. Things are going to get better for me. Things are going to go smooth for me, amen. Then listen, this light at Adversity is just for a moment, amen. I'm going into my promised land. I got to stay planted. Are you discouraged because you're not seeing things grow on the outside? Could it be possible that you're in a season where the Lord is taking your roots deep to sustain the very growth that you're asking him for? Could it be that God is answering your prayer? <laughs> See, you guys get discouraged because you ask prayers, and then it's like, why does adversity show up after I ask this prayer? Because we're working on your root system. Or sometimes God will just allow something to come to let you know, you know what, I ain't really ready for that, Lord. And now you get humility, and now, Lord, all right, develop me now. Lord, Lord, uh, uh, train me now. Uh, 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 get my root system deep. Amen. I didn't even know. How many people know that sometimes you need to win the blow to blow the loose feathers off you? <laughs> what, where did that come from? It was in there. Matthew 13, 20 and through 23. The Bible says, but he who received the seed on stony ground places... That is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no what? Root in himself. 
but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and the word becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word, understands it, who indeed bear fruit and produces some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. But I'm going to focus on this guy. It says he receives it. What was that song we saying? Joy unspeakable. What was that? He was, he was singing that. He was singing that, Sarah. So this guy, he got the word, he's singing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it says, he has no root in himself, endure for a time when tribulation, somebody say the music went out. There ain't no music in tribulation. <laughs> but guess what? He, the, God, the God he was in the joy is the same God in the tribulation. So that's why you can praise him. Joy unspeakable, full of glory over here. And when tribulation it comes, you can keep on praising him. You don't need the music. Let's see how, how real that praise is. When there ain't no praise team, when I got them up against the rope, let me see if they're going to praise God still. Amen. For when tribulation or what? persecution arises because of what? Why does tribulation and persecution come? It's not coming for you. It's coming for the word. To make you doubt the word. To make you fumble the word. Immediately he stumbles. But the, the Bible says that be, because he has no root in himself. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord, don't let anything come my way that I'm not ready for. Lord, you know, because sometimes you can be asking for something, but you don't have the root system yet. So you know what, Lord, uh, send it. I may think I'm ready, but you know my root system. I may think it's deep. I may think it's strong. But, but if I'm not ready for it, don't send it. Work on me. That's a good prayer too. Lord, work on me. I'm not, it's not about finding the right one. It's about I'm going to become the right one. It's not about finding the right job. It's about becoming the right employee. So now the door can be opened up for the right job. A lot of times it's not God's the hold up. You're the hold up. Amen. Because you're not becoming the person that you need to be to walk through the door. I still kind of compromise in my life, man. Let me be honest. That maybe that's why the Lord has not opened the door. Look at your neighbor says, it's going to take some honesty. Listen, no condemnation. We all got stuff we're dealing with. It's all right. Nobody's arrived. It's important that you allow spiritual things to take root in your life. For this to happen, it's going to take total focus. Notice one of the persons said the thorns came up and messed everything up. So listen, when you 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 got to work on your ground too. It's not just about going deep. It's about cause how many people know you can plant something, or God can be trying to plant something in your life. But if you got a bunch of compromise and things in the ground, it's gonna uh, hinder the growth or the quality of what God wants to grow in your life. So somebody said, I want quality. Then give God some good soil. If you want quality growth, give God good soil. Let me work on the soil. What am I planting? Look at your neighbor says, I am the Garden of Eden. Guess where the garden is right now? New Testament garden. Your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Whatever you want to show up in your life, plant in your heart. 
But a lot of us are allowing stuff to be planted in our life, and it's bringing us crop failure, so we're trying to uh, mingle seeds. We're sowing good seeds over here, then bad seeds over here. But anybody in Florida knows that, listen, if you're going to see stuff grow in your flower bed or your garden, you're going to have to be a consistent farmer that gets out there every day and gets the weeds out and the bugs and the things that begin to try to eat away at your harvest. Lord, create in me a clean heart. I'm telling you, over the last probably five, ten years, the the Lord is just each year another level of consecration. We ain't watching that no more. What? That's my favorite show. No, we ain't watching that. Get that out now. What? I got like series of this stuff like on DVD. Nope. You want the anointing? Or you want entertainment? You want to live off of watching other people's success? Or you want your own success? You want to watch a movie or you want to live in a movie? You want to live in, uh, watch other people's reality? Or you want to see me bring your reality? Then we got to get that stuff out. We got to go to another level of consecration because it's blocking the inner image. Let me say that again. It's blocking the inner image. It's blocking where I'm taking you to, amen? You see it. You see glimpses of it, but we need to make it clear. It can't be focus in, focus out, focus in, focus out. Clear it up. Are you a surface Christian or are you deep? By surface, I mean you are affected by things that are visible in your life. Do you only have form and no substance? Do you have longevity or do you ignite a flame but tough times put your fire out? Or are you somebody that's not affected by anything on the outside because there's something greater, stronger at work that's keeping you in the game? Look at your neighbor and say, that's me. When I came to the Lord in the faith home, I did not even realize this, guys. But I remember one of the first things the Lord told me, he said, you are entering in now a relationship with me, a one-on-one time with me where I am going to fix your life. I am going to transform you. I am going to deal with you. I'm going to confront you. Uh, I'm not here to be your best friend during this season. Um, Sometimes you'll hear me. Sometimes you won't. Um, But you need to trust my process. And if you stick with it and allow me to do what I need to do in your life, you'll become the man that I've called you to be. Don't fight against it. Don't buck it. Amen. Don't listen. You're going to feel like throwing in the towel, but you are entering into a relationship with me. And the Lord reminded me of a prayer I prayed in jail. And the prayer went like this. Father, just tell me the truth. I just want to know the truth about you. I want to know the truth about life. I want to know the truth. I just want the truth. Bring me into the truth of who you are. And the lighthouse for me was discipleship one-on-one with the Lord himself. And he took me to the process of of, of transformation, something I never heard uh, in churches that I used to go to. They used to invite me to up north. Nobody ever talked to me about any of this. I thought church was just a good time, amen. I did not know that God would confront you. When you become a son and daughter, I didn't know that God will deal with your issues. I, it's, it's almost, and the, the vision the Lord gave to me says, remember when you were a child and you and your brother used to play outside and you'd come in all dirty? What's the first thing your father used to do? Get in the bathtub. It's time to clean you guys up. And it started a scrub it, and my father was rough. Was scrub, he wasn't trying, just strong. And it started this this rough cleansing process. He says, Tony, I am unwilling to leave you in the condition I found you in. I just can't, son. 
I got to deal with it. I, you're, when your issues come up, I got to confront it. I got to give it. Enough. Now, if you want to leave with it and leave my will, I mean, you're just hurting yourself in the long run. Amen. But if you allow me when those things pop up to confront you, amen, to get them and eject them out of your life, you'll never have to deal with them again. And I realized that drugs were just an outer manifestation of a deeper, messed up root. And God said, I'm going to cut the root, amen, and give you new roots. But amputation can be painful. When God is cutting away things that you have lived with your whole life, when you have attitudes and belief systems and reactions that God begins to challenge and supernaturally the Holy Spirit begins to take them out of your life. And now you don't have alcohol to cope with pain and try to escape. Now you have to face life yourself. You have to face reality. And sometimes that can be very painful. That's what I said. God is taking us on a real walk with him. This is not playtime. This is beyond a church service. This is a relationship with the Lord God Almighty himself. He is a father. When, when Jesus rapture, ain't going to be no ministries. But we're going to be sons and daughters. He said, you're entering into a real walk with me, son. It's not, he told me it's not going to be easy. I ain't going to lie to you. It's not easy. This is not a cakewalk. That's why a lot of people quit. That's why a lot of people throw in the towel. Why? Because it gets hard to face yourself. It gets hard when you used to be a runner and God's telling you don't run. Oh, my God. The hardest, all these coping mechanisms, alcohol, and the last one for a lot of, because there ain't no alcohol in here, the last one God is dealing with right now is your run. Let me say it again. The one God is dealing with a lot of y'all right now is your, your thing that's trying to rise up to get you to run. I can't run. You got to make a decision. I'm not running. I'm not running from pain. I'm not running from confrontation. I'm not running from my own, I'm, my own thoughts telling me to get, get out of here. I'm not, I'm not running. I'm not. It's not in the good times that you grow. It's in the tough times. When you outlast tough times, your spiritual roots just went deeper. Pull up 2 Corinthians 4.17. The Bible says, for our light momentary affliction, the slight distress of the passing hour is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, excessive surpassing all comparison and calculations, a vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. You want the glory? Then you want the affliction. I want the glory. I want a greater anointing. I want a greater level of favor and blessing in my life. Well, get ready for a greater affliction. Because what is it about? Dying. <laughs> Why is he putting me through this? So your old man can die? So he don't rise up in the promised land? So she don't rise up in the promised land? So we got we to gotta make sure that, that he or she dies in the wilderness and we don't bring that into the promised land. Look at your neighbor and say, everything. <laughs> I'm telling you, all better get this one. I go through is working for my good. <laughs> now listen. I may not be smiling like this when I'm going through it. <laughs> Ain't, matter of fact, the smile is gone. But I'm, <laughs> I got to have that witness inside that, you know what, <laughs> all this crazy stuff is breaking up, but it got to be working for my good because I'm in his will. Yeah. 
All right, real quick. How do I cultivate deep, going deep in my relationship with God? The first one, submission. Ooh, I don't like that one. I want to do what I want to do. I'm talking about. Somebody say submission. Submit to God means to yield, resign, or surrender your power, will, or authority to another. Submission will require you to stop being in control and let the Lord have control of your life. You have to let God be in control. When God is in control, he will cause your roots to go deep. When you are in control, you will uproot yourself when you hit a rough spot. And one of the worst things you can do in a, to a plant that's in the process of growing is to uproot it. It died. A lot, of, a lot of times it dies. But if you're not submitted, when a rough time hit, you'll just uproot yourself. I'm out of here. I don't have to put up with this. Submission will always bring you to, I heard you all in the obedience to man class. Submission will always bring you to, the next one, obedience. Somebody say obedience is not a bad word. It's a good word. Obedience means to comply with or follow commands. Somebody that is subjected, subject, it's also somebody that has subjected themselves to the word of God, and the word of God is the final authority in their lives. Many have delayed their destiny with God by uprooting themselves. When you are obedient to the word, you will move your whole life on the rock, on the solid foundation. When you make a decision, amen, to get become disobedient, you move your life off the rock and put it on the sand. So Matthew 7, I thought I put it in there, I didn't. Matthew 7 says, the wise man built his house on a rock because he obeyed my word. The foolish man built his house on the sand because he was disobedient to my word. So as long as I'm in obedience, my life is on a rock. And guess what? Storms come, whether your life is on a rock or on the sand. But make sure your life is not on the sand, disobedience, when the storm hits, because everything you got will be destroyed. A prayer life will keep you rooted. Luke 18, 1, he spoke a parable unto them and said that men ought to always pray and not faint. It is, listen to this, it is impossible to have a prayer life and faint. People that faint ain't praying. You can't pray and faint. So if you're a prayer warrior, I'm praying. If I was in the faith, I ain't putting nothing on nobody, but if I was in the faith, I'd be here every, every uh, lunchtime. Because everything that the devil's putting on me, the atmosphere that's here, going to blow it off. It's going to blow the dust right off you. But the flesh is going to keep you out outside. Say, no, I'm going to get it. Someone with a prayer life is connected to the source of power. Someone with a prayer life is not focused on problems. They're focused on God. Prayer will always change you and your perspective. Let me say it again. Prayer will always change. How many people have went into prayer and came out with a different perspective? You went in discouraged and came out encouraged because prayer changes you and your perspective. Somebody say Joshua. Joshua was one of the spies that went into the promised land. And he was the one that said that we can surely take these giants. But why did he say that? That wasn't developed in the moment. It was developed from his prayer life. Because the Bible says when Moses left the tabernacle, Joshua stayed in the tabernacle. Joshua said, all you people are watching Moses' relationship. I'm going to go in the tabernacle and meet the God that Moses has been talking to so I can see what Moses sees. But we want to look and have a relationship with God from a far away, and we don't see accurately. There should be something in you that says, listen, I, I, I love you, Pastor Tone, but I don't want to live off your relationship. No, I, mean, I love you, Brother Copeland, but I don't want to live off your relationship. David, great. Joseph, great. But I want to know God for myself. 
I want my own relationship with the Lord. I want to meet the Lord God Almighty myself. He is no respecter of person. He don't like them no more than he likes you. But what did they do? They seeked him. They sought him. Next one, Thanksgiving. Somebody say Thanksgiving. Pull up 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In every situation, no matter what the circumstance, be thankful. And continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Thanksgiving will shift your perspective from the moment back on the eternal. Let me say it again. When you're thankful and you shift, you're going through something and you say, man, I'm, I, mean, I feel like, and you start murmuring, complaining, you got to catch yourself be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me, Father, forgive me. Father, I thank you right now that you delivered me and you set me free. Father, I thank you. I may be going through hell right now, but you're in my life and I ain't going through it all by myself and I'm coming out. So, Father, I thank you for my life, health, and strength, Father God. I thank you for a roof over my head. I thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. Father God, I thank you for that time you delivered me when I was feeling like this a few months ago. And you came in, you showed up, and you set me free. Amen. And what Thanksgiving does, it begins to change you and shift the atmosphere around you and give you an out-of-the-moment perspective and and give you an eternal perspective. I got to thank the Lord. I got to go and count my blessings. It will take you from what you're going through right to God's resume. It will activate faith and anointing that delivered you in the past to get the same faith and anointing to show up in that moment. David told Goliath, listen, the Lord gave me the victory over the lion and the bear, and surely he's going to give me the victory over you, you uncircumcised Philistine. And the same God that showed up with the lion and the bear in his private life showed up in his public life. Thanksgiving will set you free from negative attitudes. Next one, last one. Uh, I was going to call this one meditation. So meditation, consecration, call them both. Pull up Psalms 1, 1 through 3. It is really a consecration uh, scripture. The Bible says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also should not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. How did he get blessed? By not walking in wrong counsel, keeping away from sinners, not sitting in the seat of people mocking everybody, but his delight was in the law, his focus was on the things of God, the law of God. And he meditated day and night, and then the Bible said he's going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that eventually fruit begins to show up. I remember plenty of times when everybody was joking around, playing around, coming through the faith home, and I would have my little pocket Bible, and i go on the back corner of the warehouse over here. And I'll read my scriptures. I'll eat my lunch and fly outside and read my scriptures. I'm, I'm meditating on the word of God day and night. And while they're joking, talking about the staff and the ministry under that tree over there, amen, I was planning for my future. And eventually, fruit began to show up. And listen, they began to see that, oh, my God, his separation his consecration, his sowing into his life is starting to pay off. Why are they calling him out the yard? Why are they calling him in, in the office now? now? Now he ain't even wearing a T-shirt. Now he's wearing a, a nice shirt, amen. A student in the program. 
Why did they call him in the warehouse and say, you over the whole food ministry now, amen? You got the Joseph's anointing, amen? Because not what I was doing in the open, what I was doing in secret eventually began to show up and manifest in my life and silence all my naysayers. Stand to your feet. Go ahead, y'all. You, I was like, y'all can play around. I mean, you guys, you want to play around and blow your life? Why don't you just go back to uh, Falkenberg Road Jail? Well, you can do, you can play cards. You can talk about guards. You can go get into fist fights. You, you can do all that, man. I did not come here for that, man. I came here to enter into a, a real walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to get my life right. I want to join to this God. I want my future to be bright and get serious about this thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I just, at home today, I just heard the Lord say, I just heard one word, two words, go deep. And from there, just, whew. so listen, work on your root system. Once the root system is in place, none can stop you from going up, and none can stop you from going forward. Amen. I think I know everybody here, but just in case, is there anyone here tonight you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to make that decision tonight? Or maybe you want to rededicate your life to the Lord? Man, you feel something in your heart telling you that, man, you know, I need to get things right with the Lord. Anything, are you right with God? If God forbid if something happened to you and your life was taken, would you make it to heaven? Can you say that beyond a shadow of a doubt? If you can, raise your hands. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We're going to close out this service. If you need any special prayer, you need healing in your body, uh, just peace in your life, or a special prayer request, maybe a financial situation, the altars will be open up for our prayer, and our prayer team will be up here. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we just give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, Father. We thank you for... Man, who you are, Lord God. We thank you. It's so, it's so much bigger than just a church service that you desire to have uh, such a, a sweet relationship with us, Father, to make us better, Father God. I love your, your word, Lord. You say you wish above all things that we prosper, we be in hell, Father God. So, Father God, I speak a blessing over your people, Father. May they have an understanding of your will and what you're doing in their lives in this current season. May they not be uh, uh, looking over here, but you're working over here. Father God, bring us into a proper alignment, spirit, soul and body, Father God. I pray that prayer over the congregation tonight and even over my life, Father, that we will be filled with the knowledge of your will in our wisdom and spiritual understanding, Father God. Father God, sink our watches, sink our minds with heaven, Father God. Let there not be any uh, division or double-mindedness or, Father God, that we're just off. Bring us into alignment, Father. And, Father, we thank you for this now in Jesus' name. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed, church.